we are blowing up the stereotypes of learning, sports, and innovation mindsets. Students are pouring out of their classrooms around the world to play a game. Eric from Korea and Arda from Turkey are on their way to Brendan's hometown of St. Louis. They prep in the pit. They're in the stadium with music, trophies, refs, and zebra shirts, ready for a game of robots. Welcome to the universe of robotics leagues that position science and engineering as a spectator sport. No educational jargon, no textbooks, no eyes glazed over. Lessons are sporting events, loud, active, and led by students. No teachers on the field. What used to be homework is teamwork. And when it comes to sports, parents coach, support, and cheer. When kids are emotionally engaged, they learn more. As education manager at Legoland California Theme Park, I am inspired by thousands of kids and coaches every season. About 15 years ago, I leaped on board as a pilot partner for First Lego League Robotics. We cobbled together 28 teams from three states for a tournament. Everyone was skeptical. No one knew if robotics teams for kids would take off. So they gave me a tent in the parking lot. And with life-saving help from our maintenance department and 40 volunteers, we pulled it off. Well, thanks to the work of many others, robot tournaments for kids did take off. The first organization is global, with uh, other similar leagues springing up, K-12. In Southern California, I oversee 400 home teams and 30 events annually. And still, there are competing visions about the budget, space, and growth. Why should schools get on board? Because kids are learning at 21st century speed in teams without direct instruction. Take Evan. At age six, his team built a model of a moving sidewalk to help senior citizens. Or Kylie, at age 10, her team's robot runs a Lego obstacle course that simulates natural disaster recovery missions. And in the NFL of high school robotics, Allie and James run their 120 pound beast of a robot alongside groups of competing teenagers. Not as dangerous as it sounds, and not as difficult for educators. High school teams mentor the younger teams. This is not your grandfather's engineering program. There is no answer key in robotics, and adults can be uncomfortable with that. But Dr. Woody Flowers, professor emeritus at uh, MIT and a founder of FIRST, says teachers need to move away from a role of a judge with a correct answer and toward a role as coach who facilitates solving a real problem. As in real life with Apollo 13 or saving the Chilean miners, kids use limited time, limited resources, and teamwork to solve a challenge. In 2011 and 2013, Brandeis University surveyed 1,600 students on robotics teams. Over 90% said they had improved problem solving, time management, and conflict resolution skills. 87% said they were more interested in going to college. Alex, a 17-year-old, said, when I was little, I wanted to go into construction because I liked building things. Then I heard about robotics, and now I'll be a mechanical engineer. He added, they don't really tell you about these things in school. This sport is inspiring boys and girls from diverse backgrounds, like the Tigers from Islamic School of San Diego, Robotica from Turkey, and Fourth Motor from Michigan. Current female participation is about 30% by high school. Not a bad start. The U.S. workforce in 2011 had only 13% female engineers. 
I'll always remember a rookie team of two little girls, nine or 10 years old, when they on stage in front of 500 competitors, when they took the mic and chanted. Our robot's name is Eva, and yes, she is a diva. We'll make some noise and beat the boys and win it all with Eva. <laughs> they hugged and the crowd went wild. This is confidence and identity. They did not have to be like a boy to compete. Now that's blowing up the stereotypes of sports. Robotics is the hottest STEM program on the planet, but most schools don't have a team yet. Look, we don't think everything innovative is valuable, what Everett Rogers called innovation bias. We have a proven program. In his book, Crossing the Chasm, Jeffrey Moore said, visionaries think, we'll make this work, while the majority thinks, how will you make this work for us? And between these two groups is a chasm. I'd say a chasm of opportunity, an opportunity for thousands, parents, coaches, sponsors, an opportunity for you. To blow up the stereotypes of learning, abandon the majority mindset, and cross that chasm. Mentor school districts and uh, the leagues can offer support. Industry sponsors are on board, NASA, Qualcomm, and Google. This is not an innovation bubble that pops at the classroom door. When you capture kids' interest and inspire them at a young age, they will take it with them for the rest of their lives. Bringing game to our schools might be easier than we think. As the solar cycle team told us at a recent tournament, and as mechanical engineers know, not every problem has a complex solution. Let's open even more doors for students like Alex, who didn't know those doors existed. Take on a team and scale up innovation in your schools for the 21st century.